Uranium is where you find it. In our atomic age, uranium is far more precious than gold. And I'd caught uranium fever. Prospecting for this elusive treasure is hard, lonely work and dangerous. It's made bearable only by constant hope. Hope that one day your Geiger counter will record your big strike. I'm Raymond Taylor, real estate man. I was covering plenty of real estate these days. This could be it. It was, but someone else's claim. Sometimes you'd think the whole country was staked. I was part of the great uranium stampede in the Colorado Plateau, where Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona meet in the famous Four Corners area. It's desolate, broken country, this vast wasteland that holds the sinister secrets of the atom, valueless till now. But today, we prospectors are opening it up. A land never completely explored. Electronic instruments to detect invisible radiations have replaced the pick and shovel and the gold pan. Under scientific assault, the plateau is gradually revealing its rich. Ever stand on a fortune in uranium? These men are. Anyone might find uranium. Newcomer or descendant of the original property owners. Even old timers have the fever. He may come back in a Cadillac. A man with uranium fever wouldn't think of driving anywhere without having his Geiger counter turned on. It looks like this man's found something. It's uranium, all right, but it's second hand. Where man can't drive or take a horse or burrow or even walk, he prospects by air. And not only man, she uses a scintillator, even more sensitive and of greater range than the familiar Geiger counter. Radiation detectors vary in power and in price. You can spend $50 or as much as $5,000. Scintillators can also be used from small planes to detect radiation, no matter what the season. Uranium prospecting is a full-time job. For me, it began about a year ago. A friend phoned he'd found uranium and offered to cut me in. I met him at House Rock Valley. It was all very hush-hush. My friend was giving me first chance to stake adjoining claims before the news got out and the usual stampede started. I was really getting in on a good thing. Yet somehow I couldn't help wondering whether I was becoming involved in just another uranium stock promotion deal. The place seemed hot enough. The next day I staked my first claim. What could I lose at a dollar filing fee? I started back home. I didn't get there. Something had happened to me. This was too big and too exciting to leave. I didn't know it then, but I had uranium fever. My first stop was Moab, Utah, uranium capital of America. Only yesterday, a quiet Mormon village. Today, a boom town. Here, everybody talked uranium. Wild talk, mostly. Especially if they hadn't found any yet. A town of men in hope and women in furs. And everybody in stock deals. Big deals. I soon learned the value of my unproved claims. He had all you wanted at $35 a piece. There's not as much actual claim jumping as in the old hoopla and hard rock days, but there is some disagreement over who was there first. It's usually a case of not filing right that leaves the situation open to argument. Occasionally, things get serious. The fight can be pretty explosive when human nature mixes with uranium. 
I saw uranium being mined. It can be anywhere and practically any color, and anyone might find it. Somebody found this. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> All staked. There was nothing left for me here. I returned to House Rock Valley, looking for my own private big one, not realizing how much I had to learn. Meanwhile, I kept staking claims on any sign of surface reaction, wondering at the same time what I was doing out here. Winter caught me still wondering. Camping out used to be fun 25 years ago. It was hard to believe that only last summer I'd been that other Raymond Taylor, a satisfied, moderately successful businessman, three married children, another in college. Once I was settled in my way of life. Here, there wasn't any place to settle. Cheerful thought. This place was beginning to look like a property owner's convention. Finally, I made my first big deal. From the number of papers I had assigned, you'd have thought I was buying the Empire State Building. She wasn't much for looks, but to me, she was home sweet home on wheels. Home. My wife kept writing, asking when I'd return from my vacation. How could I tell her? I didn't know myself. The endless hunt went on. I'd heard that the most likely places to look for uranium in this area were in three separate strata. This is the Moenkopi Formation, generally chocolate brown rock. This, the Shinarump, a yellow-gray capstone and the Chin Li of poisonous pastel shades. Here, nothing grows. Petrified trees from some long forgotten forest. This one's hot. But in the four corners, everybody has a better rock than yours and a better theory. On paper, they're all millionaires. You can build your monuments and stake your claims, but there's another factor, luck. Ask Budge Porritt about luck. Without even a Geiger counter, he staked claims behind his service station and stands to make a fortune. Ask Blanton Burford about luck. A printer from Dallas, Texas, Burford spent one year on the Colorado Plateau and made four million in uranium. But Charlie Steen is the big story. A geologist who depended on knowledge and hard work, he hunted uranium where the experts said it wasn't. Today, Steen's holdings are worth more than $100 million. Promoting all this activity is the Atomic Energy Commission. The government needs uranium and helps you to find it. As always, the good old American incentive system works best. For me, there was enough incentive to try to duplicate the feats of a human fly. One afternoon, I managed to lower myself down to a ledge. Getting back up proved quite a problem. There was a lot I had to learn about climbing cliffs. called for a strategic retreat. I spent a lonely night ledged up, waiting till morning to find my way down. That spring, I was still at, still learning the hard way. I did discover the importance of water, naturally the hard way. Water, such a simple word for something so important. You never really appreciate it till you're without it. 
I'd been without it enough hours now to know. I guess I must have smelled it. It was, and muddy enough to walk on. But who cared? Suddenly, I did. There was something funny here. It must have been the scenery. It was just a little too realistic. The steer couldn't read. I don't remember how much farther I walked, but it was just about all I could take. This time, it had to be. Mirage or water. I actually managed to run. It was water, all right. The stuff my dreams had been made of during these last days. The harder I fought, the deeper I went. One dry branch was the only thing between me and eternity. I was still learning the hard way, but learning. Like the day I found another location notice had been substituted for mine. My claim was already on file at the county recorders. It didn't make sense. But the gun did. He suggested I sign a quit claim. I refused. I figured he was bluffing. Next morning, I had an appointment at 9 o'clock. My friend was late. He'd had an earlier appointment with some unknown gunman. <laughs> play for keeps in uranium. The papers call this one the Geiger counter murder. But the fever keeps you going. Then finally, one day I found different looking outcroppings. I tested over a wide area, still the same. I'd really hit it. I staked a series of claims. I was in business, but the law says you have to prove your find. That costs money. I thought I could raise it. I couldn't. I'd seen development work on other people's claims. Drilling, then probing to determine strength and size of ore deposits. Then comes mining. I couldn't have raised enough money even for drilling, let alone mining operations. For mining, you need heavy equipment, sometimes a lot of it. And unless you have capital to back you, you're just plain out of luck. This is uranium ore piled up by the acre. The H stands for high grade. Ore that averages 1% uranium is worth around $94 a ton. Ship 10 trucks a day, and with bonuses, you're a millionaire in 60 days. But what I needed was someone to risk that development money. I borrowed from friends and relatives. It wasn't nearly enough. I wrote to all the uranium mining companies. Those that replied said no. I'm sure they got hundreds of letters like mine. I knew the statistics. Out of hundreds of thousands of claims filed, less than 1% become operating mines. These long weeks were my darkest. At 50, I'd used all my savings, borrowed to the limit. Now, with success almost mine, I prayed hard. I kept prospecting, trying to keep my mind off my own frustration. It looked like a low-flying prospector's plane. Maybe picked up my find on their instruments and coming in for a better look. 
well, just about everything else had happened. Somehow, it didn't matter anymore. If you're Raymond Taylor, we want to talk to you. But why? Frank Pinio and Lloyd Lyon of Zion Uranium were answering my letters in person. They had money and equipment. I had the claims. We had a deal on a royalty basis. We began the development work, drilling test holes. This was it at last. I was working my own property. It was up to fate now. The probe counter would soon show whether I had a small surface outcropping or a deep vein. We were getting near the payoff now. Then a low reading. But it was there. A large deep vein and I'd be a uranium millionaire. A shallow outcropping and I'd be flat broke. Another victim of uranium fever. One way or another, this would end my story. And to you guys with the fever stirring in your blood, I wish you luck. You'll need it.